The seven best places to travel on planet Earth as a woman, depending on your interests. At different seasons in my life, there have been different places that really suited what I was interested in doing. But as a woman, these are all countries that I have really enjoyed and experiences that have been amazing for me to have, whether I've had it by myself, sharing it with friends, or sharing it with a big group of women on one of my tours. So without further ado, these are seven amazing places to travel as a woman. For the adventure seeker, I highly recommend the Western Cape in South Africa. It's the first place that I ever bungee jumped and I started off big because I did the Blowfriends Bridge Bridge in Nature's Valley, which is the highest bridge jump in the world at 216 meters. There's so much to do in Cape Town, which honestly must be one of the most beautiful, picturesque cities in the world. It's coastal and it's got some amazing hikes, including Table Mountain, which can be challenging, but there are a lot of different routes that you can take and you can also drive up or take a cable car if you want. You could abseil down if you're really feeling adventurous, or you can just walk or drive down. There's also Lion's Head, which is an amazing hike, also very very beautiful and it's popular to do on a full moon. People also paraglide off of lion's head so if you're really feeling like you want some adrenaline you can do that or if you want to do something a little bit less mm, dangling by a parachute you can also take a helicopter ride and get some beautiful views that way over Cape Town. This is also a part of the world where you can do shark cape diving with great white sharks. If you love the ocean, if you really want to get your adrenaline going, this is the ultimate adventure girls destination because you've got hiking, you've got shark diving, you've got jumping, you've got paragliding, you've got surfing, you've got all kinds of things that you can do all within this one area of South Africa, which in and of itself is one of the most adventurous countries I've ever visited and highly recommend to the female travelers out there. For the introvert, I would consider myself a sort of outgoing introvert. I definitely recharge when I'm by myself and one of my favorite places to do that is the California desert. The reason why I love this part of the world so much is because it's so underrated and not that many people go there. You've got the beautiful Death Valley National Park which has some of the most insane landscapes and formations I've ever seen. You've got the rainbowy colors of the painter's palette. I can't believe it looks like this here. You've got the really interesting salty landscape of the Badwater Basin which is the lowest point in the US. And then you've got Mount Whitney, which is only a few hours away, which is the highest point in the lower 48 of the US. Crazy. You can also enjoy some time around other people if you catch the sunrise at Zabriskie Point, but all you have to do is hike a little bit into the Golden Canyon and you'll have a lot more solitude once again. I also really love the Mojave, which is nearby, a little bit south. This is an area that is just insane to drive through. It actually has more Joshua trees than Joshua Tree National Park, which is one of the most popular national parks that we have in California but still one that I would recommend checking out. What I love about the Mojave, in addition to just the wide open spaces though, is you have some lava tubes, which are really cool to check out, as well as the Kelso sand dunes. And you can camp outside of those if you wish. One of my favorite places to stay in this area is 29 Palms. You've got these really, really unique Airbnbs and cool vacation rentals. I've stayed in one before that was straight out of the 70s. I've stayed in one before that had its own rock hot spring that was just absolutely wonderful and stunning to experience by myself. And you guys, if you happen to go during a new moon, you are going to see the most beautiful stars above you. So for those who enjoy their solitude, I highly recommend the California deserts. I just don't recommend it in the hottest summer months because Death Valley is regularly the hottest place on earth during this time of year. So the winter, spring, and fall seasons, great time to go. My favorite place for nature lovers, and before I get to that, I just want to thank the sponsor of this video, Together. Together is a media and commerce company founded by four of the world's greatest athletes. Alex Morgan, Chloe Kim, Simone Manuel, and Sue Bird. They created this because women make up 44% of all participants in sports, and yet women only get 10% of sports coverage. With a focus on rich storytelling, Together is an unapologetic platform where representation and equality is the norm place where culture, activism, lifestyle, and sports converge. They want to shatter the often narrow depictions of women in media with content featuring a diverse and inclusive community of game changers, culture shapers, thought leaders, and barrier breakers. I can definitely dig that as someone who champions solo female travel. The nature lover. There are so many places that I could recommend. Canada, so much of the US, so much of really anywhere on planet Earth, but one of my absolute favorites is Torres del Paine National Park in Chile. This is in the heart of Patagonia, and my favorite thing to do there is to hike the O Circuit, which is an eight-day trek. 
You can either pack everything on your back and do it as a backpacking trip, which I have done before. You can also pre-book some tents ahead of time. It's best to book a tour if you want to do this, or you can even stay in the refugios. It's a great way to meet other people. This is one of those trails that you never have to worry about truly being alone because although it's popular, it's also so beautiful that it just makes up for it seeing every beautiful vista and the fact that this trail changes so much day by day by day. One day you're standing looking at the Southern Patagonian ice field, which is the third largest body of frozen freshwater in the world, and the next day you're hiking into the French Valley looking at the Britannica lookout. You're also looking at beautiful lakes all along the way. It just is constantly changing scenery that I find so impressive. So you've got this beautiful hike with all of these beautiful scenery and it all culminates with the towers that made the park famous. It's a trio of three spiky rocks that people actually rock climb. And the most popular thing to do there is to catch the sunrise, which if you happen to get a clear day, it is just so stunning and lucky. And I have actually seen the Milky Way through those as well. And that was a special treat as well. When you're finished with your hike, you can stay at the Hotel Las Torres. And this is where gaucho culture is is so rich. You can take horses to some of the most beautiful viewpoints in the park, or you can take it for a sunset ride around the lakes. This is truly one of my favorite places to really feel immersed in nature, and I've taken many women on backpacking trips here over the years because I just want to show more people this beautiful part of the world. Patagonia truly is special. For the foodie, there are so many places on this planet that food is amazing. Mexico, Japan, France, Italy, but my favorite really has to be Chiang Mai in Thailand. There are not very many places in the world where you can eat street food that is delicious, super fresh, and can compete with some of the best restaurants in the world for about a dollar. That is the amazing thing about traveling through Thailand and eating your way through it. And Chiang Mai in particular is a special place because you've got so many markets, including the Sunday Night Bazaar, where they have such good food. And you'll see the normal suspects like Pad Thai, they have bacon wrapped mushrooms, which are delicious. Of course, you've got all of the different kinds of curry, red curry, Penang curry, green curry, Masaman curry. But one that's unique to Chiang Mai is the cow soy curry. That's a coconut curry base, but it usually has the chicken leg in it, some crispies on top, and egg noodles, which makes it a little bit different from any of the other curries that you're going to encounter in Thailand. Another thing that I love doing in Chiang Mai is taking a cooking class. Highly recommend that you try this out. It gives you a chance to go shopping at the markets, take that food and learn from a Thai guide on how to cook it and make the food truly from scratch in the best possible way, and then to take those skills home and be able to recreate it. You'll find that Thai food is not necessarily about being super complex, it's about having incredible ingredients from step one and putting them together in such a way, layering the flavors that it just turns out absolutely delicious, and there's a reason why so many people, myself included, are obsessed with Thai food. For the luxury traveler, haven't we all wanted a little bit of luxury at some point during our travels? Got something more fancy on for my, my breakfast date. I definitely love the Amalfi Coast in Italy for this. I mean, speaking of incredible food, you've got Thailand, but then you've got Italy. <laughs> you've also got so many luxury hotel options that have truly stunning views of the Mediterranean. Honestly, there are so many options all along the towns there. You've got Amalfi, you've got Positano, you've got Revelia, and you've got Praiano, which is where I stayed and had the best view and the best time. Some amazing things that you can do there are rent a boat and take yourself to some of these beautiful towns along the coastline. Or you can take a boat tour, or if you wanna go super luxury, rent your own boat with your own captain and have them take you to some of the best sites, including the island of Capri. And you're sure to see a few homes there of the rich and famous, some celebrities, singers, and actresses that you know very well. This is another place where you can take a cooking class. You can hire a private chef to teach you some of the best cuisine from the region. Many hotels and restaurants do offer for this experience, so be sure to ask when you check in. The best place for the culture lovers out there, I absolutely have to recommend Kyoto. This is the ancient capital of Japan, and there is a reason why people are so enchanted by it, both Japanese and international tourists alike. I had the chance to go last month, and it just blew my mind with its beauty. With its historic temples, traditional gardens, and vibrant festivals, Kyoto offers a glimpse to Japan's rich cultural heritage. One of the must-see attractions is definitely the Fushimi Inari Shrine. It's famous for those thousands of bright Tory gates and they really are so impressive in person. I highly recommend going very early in the morning if you want to more or less get them to yourself. Their entire grounds at this shrine is truly beautiful as well. 
Then you have the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest, which although touristy is another thing that is so worth seeing, it's a unique thing to see in Kyoto, and I know you've seen pictures and footage of it before. Kyoto is also known for having a rich food culture. I'm sure you can see a running theme here that eating your way through a country is such a wonderful way to get to know it. One of the things that I love doing when I am in Japan is a kaiseki dinner, which is a multi-course dining just experience where they have a team of chefs and each chef is cooking a different dish to really showcase their skill. So each dish shows a different method of cooking. You almost always have a soup dish. And this is actually the best miso soup I have ever had. A sushi dish, a rice dish, and of course a grilled dish and dessert. Speaking of dessert, do not leave Kyoto without trying as many matcha desserts as possible. And speaking of matcha, tea ceremonies at some of the temples are a really great way to get a sense of the culture. And a lot of them will also let you put on a kimono for the experience. This is actually something that a lot of people do when they visit Kyoto, whether they are tourists or domestic tourists from other parts of Japan, people go to Kyoto to put on the kimono and it's a really different way to experience a culture to put on the traditional dress and be able to take pictures with that and the tea ceremonies are a really good way to make sure that you get that chance. Finally, for the beach bum, I just love Indonesia. There are so many islands to it. It is a beautiful, varied, vibrant country, but one of my favorite islands to visit is definitely Lombok. Good morning from Lombok in Indonesia. You've probably heard of Bali. Lombok is the island next door. And the nice thing about it is even if you visit during the rainy season, it tends to be a lot drier. There are far fewer tourists. And one of my favorite things to do there is to go to Kuta rent a scooter, and explore the beautiful beaches around. I've gotten plenty of them to myself from time to time. The island also has the Rinjani volcano, which is incredible, lots of beautiful waterfalls. Another thing that I love to do when I'm on Lombok is go to the nearby islands. There's actually 11 gillies, as they're known, which are small islands off of Lombok. The most popular ones are Gili Trawangan, Gili Ayer, and Gili Mino. For a true beach bum, this is kind of as good as it gets. You get to stay in amazing, beautiful accommodation that's usually really cheap. You can get some pretty good places for around 25 bucks per night. And you can lounge on the beach all day, meet so many cool people, eat really well, and just generally enjoy the island life for not that much money. Nearby, I also really love the Noosa Islands. Those are off of Bali, but you can easily get there from the Gili Islands. There's a lot more adventure on these islands. They're a little bit rockier, a little bit more rugged, but there's so much to do there. There's surfing, there's amazing culture, which is going to be really different from what you'll find in Lombok because the Noosa Islands are Balinese. You've got so many beautiful beaches to check out there as well. So you really can't go wrong as a beach bum in Indonesia. Out of all of these, what kind of traveler do you think you are? Or are you not even on this list? What would you add? I've got tons of super helpful tips on this channel. Be sure to check out more videos, especially why women should travel alone. And be sure to subscribe to Together's social media channels as well as their YouTube. Thanks for tuning in guys. See you next time.